What does Jane Art look like? Jainism is an important religion in India, in addition to Hainutism. Though only a small percentage of Indians are Jainists. Jainists believe in the cycle of death and rebirth, called samsara, and attempt to live pure. Ascetic lives by looking inwards, avoiding material possessions, and acting kindly to others. At first glance, it may be difficult to distinguish Jain art from Buddhist and Hindu art. But one of the key types of Jain art is monumental nudes of meditating warriors, known as Jinas. The ascetic Gamata in Karnataka, India, is an example of this. At around 60 feet tall, this 10th century, colossal sculpture represents Gamata. Who was famous for meditating for years without stopping? The figure of Gamata stands at attention with poised shoulders, confident chin, and stoic face. The sculpture's nudity, along with images of tree branches and creepers that curl around his limbs, are meant to emphasize the genus' focus on spiritual, rather than material needs. Sculpture such as the, the ascetic Gamata is used to aid Jainists in their own meditations. What is medieval expressionism? Medieval Expressionism was a style that emphasized the communication of feeling and emotion. The page with Saint Matthew from the Gospel Book of Ebo, illustrates a scene in which St. Matthew sits at his desk frantically writing, his face twisted with intense emotion. Saint Matthew's robe, hair, and the sharply bending grasses in the background are made up of repeated linear flourishes. It seems as though Matthew, hunched over and sporting triangular eyebrows, fears divine inspiration will be lost if he does not immediately write down his evangelical text. This manuscript painting, done in gold and colored ink on vellum in the 9th century, is an example of medieval expressionism. The whole scene seems to be blowing in the wind, and the dramatic quality of the work expresses an emotional, rather than purely intellectual element of the Gospels. Who was Guan Daos Hung? Guan Doosheng was a renowned female calligrapher, painter, and poet working during the Yuan dynasty. She was famous for her paintings of bamboo plants. Bamboo was an important symbol in Chinese art because the plant's branches and leaves are reminiscent of calligraphy. And because bamboo is flexible under pressure it will bend, but not break. Guan Daoshan's hand scroll, 10,000 bamboo poles in cloudy mist, is the earliest surviving example of work done by a woman in China. In this painting, delicate bamboo leaves are lush and meticulously depicted, while the firm shoots are thought to represent faithfulness and fidelity. What is the classical pantheon?
The ancient Greeks and Romans were polytheistic, which means that they believed in many gods. Each with different attributes and personalities, and collectively referred to as the Greek and Roman pantheon. The human-like classical gods and goddess were frequently depicted in ancient art. And temples were built in their honor. Greek name Roman name description Zeus Jupiter ruler of the gods, often depicted holding a lightning bolt. Reigns from Mount Olympus, Hera Juno wife of Zeus and goddess of marriage. Often jealous as Zeus had many affairs, Aphrodite Venus goddess of beauty, love, and sex, mother of Cupid. Known for frequent love affairs with gods and mortals, Apollo Apollo son of Zeus and twin brother to Artemis. God of the sun, music, archery, prophecy, and poetry, Athena Minerva patron goddess of Athens. Goddess of wisdom, weaving, and art, Demeter Ceres goddess of fertility and harvest, her daughter. Persephone, was kidnapped by Hades and taken to the underworld, Hades Pluto god of the underworld. Ares Mars god of war, Hermes Mercury messenger god, often depicted with a winged helmet. Artemis Diana virgin goddess of the hunt and wilderness, Poseidon Neptune god of the sea, depicted carrying a trident. What are the main characteristics of Ottonian architecture? The Ottonian rulers emphasized their imperial strength and military prowess. Through the construction of monumental architecture reminiscent of ancient Rome. Churches of the period followed the basilica plan and featured wooden roofs, many of which burned down. The Church of St. Zariacus in Jern Road, Germany, begun in 961, is one of the best surviving examples of Ottonian architecture. The church architects placed a newfound focus on verticality which foreshadowed the leaping heights of much later medieval buildings. The Church of St. Zariacus features a second-floor gallery, clear story windows, and a west workay wall along the west end 74 of the nave, one of the key features of Ottonian church architecture. Why is the cover of the Lindau Gospels so luxurious? This astonishing book cover, decorated with pearls, sapphires, emeralds, garnet, and gold, was not originally intended for the 9th century Lindau Gospels. Though it has been associated with this manuscript since before the 16th century. The book cover was made at a monastic workshop during the reign of Charles the Bald. Charlemagne's grandson, who ruled from 840 to 877, and represents Christ on the cross. Christ is surrounded by mourning figures but stands erect with his palms forward, and stares powerfully ahead. The work was made in a style known as repousse, which means the figures were hammered into low relief from the back of the metal cover. The fine gold reflects glittering light, and the jewels evoke heavenly Jerusalem. The obvious luxury of the cover indicates the inherent value of books during the medieval period. 
and the richness of the materials emphasize the triumph of Christ, foreshadowing the resurrection. Who were the literati? The literati, or Wenren in Chinese, were highly educated. Scholar painters often held in higher regard than the imperial court painters of the time because of their free-thinking intellectuality and because they did not rely on their art to make a living. Emerging during the Song dynasty, the literati are known for their relatively austere black ink paintings. Created using a painting technique called Shi Emo. They were also highly skilled calligraphers and poets. What are important symbols in Jewish iconography? Though idols are forbidden in the Jewish tradition, some images are frequently repeated. Especially in the decoration of synagogues and the Jewish holy book, the Torah. Scenes from Jewish history including the story of Moses, were common choices for synagogues, and can be seen in the decoration of Dura Europo. Important Jewish symbols include the following, Menorah Sacred, Seven-branched candelabrum shofar a ram's horn used like a trumpet during ceremonies Atrog citrus fruit used to celebrate Sukkot, a harvest festival lulav a palm branch also associated with Sukkot in a 6th century synagogue located in ancient Manois. In modern day Israel, the floors are decorated with Roman style mosaics. Which feature the traditional Jewish symbols mentioned above, along with stylized birds, plants. And animals which are thought to represent Earth's bounty and the unity of the Jewish people. What is a Psalter? A Psalter is a book containing the text of the Book of Psalms from the Old Testament. The most famous Carolingian Psalter is the Utrecht Psalter, known for its lively ink drawings. The manuscript was produced at the Imperial Scriptorium in Reims. In modern-day France, in the first half of the 9th century. The illustrations of the Utrecht Psalter incorporate architectural and landscape scenes and the text features Roman-style majuscules. As psalms are not narrative, they are challenging to illustrate. The artists who created the Utrecht Psalter illustrated them by expressively visualizing specific phrases from the text. What is the Jero Crucifix? The Jero Crucifix is a life-size sculpture depicting the body of Christ on the cross. Made of gilded and painted wood and meant to be suspended above an altar. The back of Christ's head was hollowed in order to hold communion bread used in the ritual of the Eucharist, as opposed to the triumphant pose of Christ as seen on the book cover of the Lindau Gospels.
this representation of Christ emphasizes suffering. Christ's head hangs heavily and his body appears limp and frail. This is the first time in history that an image of dead Christ was depicted on the cross. Did samurai culture influence Japanese art? As samurai culture grew stronger during the Kamakura period, 1185 to 1392, it did indeed have an influence on the arts, including sculpture and painting. One of the most powerful hand scroll paintings from the 13th century is Night Attack on the Sanjo Palace, which depicts swirling flames in deep orange hues as armored. Warriors on horseback attack one another in a battle between the Minamoto and Tara clans. The surprise attack was a significant historical event in Japan's military history. And though the hand scroll was painted nearly 100 years after the battle took place, it serves as a historical record of the period. Did samurai culture influence Japanese art? As samurai culture grew stronger during the Kamakura period, 1185 to 1392, it did indeed have an influence on the arts, including sculpture and painting. One of the most powerful hand scroll paintings from the 13th century is Night Attack on the Sanjo Palace, which depicts swirling flames in deep orange hues as armored. Warriors on horseback attack one another in a battle between the Minamoto and Tara clans. The surprise attack was a significant historical event in Japan's military history. And though the hand scroll was painted nearly 100 years after the battle took place, it serves as a historical record of the period. What is Great Zimbabwe? Great Zimbabwe was an important capital city of the Bantu-speaking Shona people between the 12th and 15th centuries, reaching its peak between 1250 and 1450 with an estimated population of approximately 15,000 people and control over a large territory, covering an area of nearly 2,000 acres, the ruined city of Great Zimbabwe is principally comprised of three structures, the hill complex, the valley ruins, and the great enclosure, which are surrounded by a large protective wall, nearly 30 feet tall. The great enclosure, which dates from the mid-14th to 15th century, was made with a special pattern of dry stone blocks, a technique still used by contemporary builders, and is the largest stone structure in sub-Saharan Africa. Many sculpture and pottery fragments have been found at the Great Zimbabwe site, indicating a rich art culture. A popular material for sculpture was soapstone, and many examples of soapstone bird carvings have been discovered. Though the exact significance of these sculptures is still unknown.
What is Great Zimbabwe? Great Zimbabwe was an important capital city of the Bantu-speaking Shona people between the 12th and 15th centuries, reaching its peak between 1250 and 1450 with an estimated population of approximately 15,000 people and control over a large territory. Covering an area of nearly 2,000 acres, the ruined city of Great Zimbabwe is principally comprised of three structures, the hill complex, the valley ruins, and the great enclosure, which are surrounded by a large protective wall, nearly 30 feet tall. The great enclosure, which dates from the mid-14th to 15th century, was made with a special pattern of dry stone blocks, a technique still used by contemporary builders. And is the largest stone structure in sub-Saharan Africa. Many sculpture and pottery fragments have been found at the Great Zimbabwe site. Indicating a rich art culture. A popular material for sculpture was soapstone, and many examples of soapstone bird carvings have been discovered. Though the exact significance of these sculptures is still unknown. What kind of art was made in Ilifat? Alifa was the capital of the Yoruba people of Nigeria from the 13th to the 15th century. An era known as the pavement period due to the Yoruba practice of paving parts of the city with rectangular rows of stone and pottery fragments laid out in a herringbone pattern. Alifa was an important center for the arts, and the Yoruba established a long tradition of portraiture including works in stone, wood, and terracotta, as well as later works in bronze, brass, and other metal alloys made using the lost wax casting method. Portrait sculpture played an important role in ritualistic ancestor worship, and sculptures were often ornately decorated with veils, wigs, crowns, or neck rings, particularly during important ceremonies. What kind of art was made in Alifat? Alifat was the capital of the Yoruba people of Nigeria from the 13th to the 15th century. An era known as the pavement period due to the Yoruba practice of paving parts of the city with rectangular rows of stone and pottery fragments laid out in a herringbone pattern. Alifa was an important center for the arts, and the Yoruba established a long tradition of portraiture, including works in stone, wood, and terracotta, as well as later works in bronze brass, and other metal alloys made using the lost wax casting method. Portrait sculpture played an important role in ritualistic ancestor worship, and sculptures were often ornately decorated with veils, wigs, crowns, or neck rings, particularly during important ceremonies. What do the Yoruba consider beautiful?
To make a beautiful work of art in the Yoruba tradition is a complex task. With many aesthetic requirements and a long tradition of art criticism. The Yoruba are known for their multifaceted approach to beauty. In which morality of the artist affects the aesthetic value of the work they create. They value both the inner and exterior concept of self. And at the core of this value is the idea of Iwaleva, which means, character is beauty or, nature is beauty. The work of art itself, for example a figurative sculpture, must also possess specific qualities. Including the following, balance between realism and abstraction, for example, a sculpture should not be too real. Nor too abstract, clearly defined linear forms smooth, delicate surfaces, and slightly rounded features pleasing. Proportion and dignified symmetry youthful liveliness balanced with calm maturity an example of the Yoruba. Aesthetic can be seen in a 13-inch copper sculpture from the 13th to 14th centuries. This sculpture depicts a stoic, seated male figure, and though it is now damaged. The figure's forearms are missing and there is some damage in the legs, the work displays skillful naturalism. Individualized detail, smooth features, and appropriate size and proportion. It is possible that the seated figure was ritualistically adorned with the clothes and ornaments of a Yoruba leader and is associated with Yoruba themes of honor and respect. Yoruba society remains one of the largest in Africa, with a population of about 35 million in Nigeria alone. As well as other African countries, the Caribbean, and the United States. The Yoruba aesthetic continues to be an important element in Yoruba art production and function, to this day. What do the Yoruba consider beautiful? To make a beautiful work of art in the Yoruba tradition is a complex task. With many aesthetic requirements and a long tradition of art criticism. The Yoruba are known for their multifaceted approach to beauty. In which morality of the artist affects the aesthetic value of the work they create. They value both the inner and exterior concept of self. And at the core of this value is the idea of Iwaleva, which means, character is beauty or, nature is beauty. The work of art itself, for example a figurative sculpture, must also possess specific qualities. Including the following, balance between realism and abstraction, for example, a sculpture should not be too real nor too abstract, clearly defined linear forms smooth, delicate surfaces, and slightly rounded features pleasing. Proportion and dignified symmetry youthful liveliness balanced with calm maturity an example of the Yoruba. Aesthetic can be seen in a 13-inch copper sculpture from the 13th to 14th centuries. This sculpture depicts a stoic, seated male figure, and though it is now damaged. The figure's forearms are missing and there is some damage in the legs, the work displays skillful naturalism. Individualized detail, smooth features, and appropriate size and proportion. It is possible that the seated figure was ritualistically adorned with the clothes and 
ornaments of a Yoruba leader and is associated with Yoruba themes of honor and respect. Yoruba society remains one of the largest in Africa, with a population of about 35 million in Nigeria alone. As well as other African countries, the Caribbean, and the United States. The Yoruba aesthetic continues to be an important element in Yoruba art production. And function, to this day. What is the Great Mosque at Jin? Also referred to as the Great Friday Mosque at Jin. The Great Mosque is the largest mud brick structure in the world. At least three main incarnations of the mosque have existed, including an original mosque from the 13th century and two major reconstructions in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The city of Jin, located in Mali, was a sophisticated urban and religious center by the 13th century due to its location along Saharan trade routes, and the expansion of Islam. The Great Mosque at Jin is characterized by its smooth, Beige walls constructed of sun-baked mud bricks, the bricks themselves were composed of clay and straw. As well as the many wooden poles that stick out from the walls. Due to the fragile nature of the mud bricks, the walls of the mosque are frequently rebuilt. And the wood supports allow workers to replaster the exterior. During a special annual festival in which the entire community participates. The grand design of the Great Mosque at Jin influenced. Islamic architecture in other parts of Africa, including the Sudan. What is the Great Mosque at Jin? Also referred to as the Great Friday Mosque at Jin. The Great Mosque is the largest mud brick structure in the world. At least three main incarnations of the mosque have existed, including an original mosque from the 13th century. And two major reconstructions in the 19th and early 20th centuries. The city of Jin located in Mali, was a sophisticated urban and religious center by the 13th century due to its location along Saharan trade routes, and the expansion of Islam. The Great Mosque at Jin is characterized by its smooth beige walls constructed of sun-baked mud bricks, the bricks themselves were composed of clay and straw as well as the many wooden poles that stick out from the walls. Due to the fragile nature of the mud bricks, the walls of the mosque are frequently rebuilt. And the wood supports allow workers to replaster the exterior. During a special annual festival in which the entire community participates. The grand design of the Great Mosque at Jin influenced. Islamic architecture in other parts of Africa, including the Sudan. What are the rock churches of Lalabella? Lalabella was a medieval city in Ethiopia ruled by the Zagwa dynasty. 
which held power from 1137 until the end of the 13th century. The city was also an important Christian center and a popular pilgrimage route. And church building projects were possibly conceived of as the construction of a new Jerusalem in the Ethiopian mountains. At the behest of King Lalibela, Ethiopian Christians carved 11 churches out of red, volcanic rock. Some of which are freestanding, while others are semi-detached and carved into rock walls. The churches are tall, narrow, and rectangular with a combination of arabesque and cruciform windows. These unique structures have been declared a UNESCO World Heritage. Site and remain an important site for Ethiopian Christians. What are the rock churches of Lalabella? Lalabella was a medieval city in Ethiopia ruled by the Zagwa dynasty, which held power from 1137 until the end of the 13th century. The city was also an important Christian center and a popular pilgrimage route. And church building projects were possibly conceived of as the construction of a new Jerusalem in the Ethiopian mountains. At the behest of King Lalabella, Ethiopian Christians carved 11 churches out of red, volcanic rock. Some of which are freestanding while others are semi-detached and carved into rock walls. The churches are tall, narrow, and rectangular with a combination of arabesque and cruciform windows. These unique structures have been declared a UNESCO World Heritage. Site and remain an important site for Ethiopian Christians. What is pre-Columbian art? Pre-Columbian art is a broad term given to the art of Mesoamerica, which includes Mexico and Central America, and South America before the arrival of Christopher Columbus. In 1492, it includes the art of large cultures such as the Maya, Aztecs, and Inca. What is pre-Columbian art? Pre-Columbian art is a broad term given to the art of Mesoamerica which includes Mexico and Central America, and South America before the arrival of Christopher Columbus. In 1492, it includes the art of large cultures such as the Maya, Aztecs, and Inca. What are the major periods of Mesoamerican art? Mesoamerican art, art of Mexico and Central America is divided into three main categories, the pre-classic period, c. 1200b.c.e.300 CE classic period, c. 300 to 950 post-classic period, c. 950, 1521 The post classic period ended quite suddenly. When the major indigenous empires of the Americas fell to the Spanish conquistadores led by Hernan Cortes.
What are the major periods of Mesoamerican art? Mesoamerican art, art of Mexico and Central America is divided into three main categories, the pre-classic period, c. 1200b.c.e.300 ce classic period, c. 300 to 950 post-classic period, c. 950-1521 the post-classic period ended quite suddenly. When the major indigenous empires of the Americas fell to the Spanish conquistadores led by Hernán Cortés. What is the portrait of Lord Packle? Lord Packle was a powerful Mayan ruler from the ancient city of Palenque. In modern-day Chiapas in Mexico, between 615 and 683 c. E. Lord Packle and his descendants commissioned a great deal of monumental art and architecture in this Mayan capital. At his death, Lord Packle was laid to rest in a sarcophagus. In his tomb archaeologists found a portrait of the ruler as a young man with a crown of jade and flowers. He is thought to be represented according to Mayan ideals of beauty, which emphasize a long, sloping face and skull, and full lips. Traces of red paint indicate that the piece used to be painted, as was most Mayan sculpture. What is the portrait of Lord Packle? Lord Packle was a powerful Mayan ruler from the ancient city of Palenque. In modern-day Chiapas in Mexico, between 615 and 683 c. E. Lord Packle and his descendants commissioned a great deal of monumental art and architecture in this Mayan capital. At his death, Lord Packle was laid to rest in a sarcophagus. In his tomb archaeologists found a portrait of the ruler as a young man with a crown of jade and flowers. He is thought to be represented according to Mayan ideals of beauty, which emphasize a long, sloping face and skull, and full lips. Traces of red paint indicate that the piece used to be painted, as was most Mayan sculpture. What is the significance of ball playing in Mesoamerica? Ball games were popular throughout Mesoamerica. And art depicting ball games exists in many Mesoamerican cultures including the Olmec, Maya, and Aztec. Archaeologists have even discovered the ruins of sunken Olmec ball courts. Not much is known about the specific rules of the game. Mayan art depicts ball players wearing protective padding. And other art shows players wearing helmets and even leather belts. It is important to note that the game wasn't just for fun it had. A serious religious significance for those who played and watched. It is possible that some ball players were forced to participate.
against their will and that human sacrifice played a role in the game. According to Mayan mythology, ball games were symbolic of the cycle of life, death, and regeneration. What is the significance of ball playing in Mesoamerica? Ball games were popular throughout Mesoamerica. An art depicting ball games exists in many Mesoamerican cultures including the Olmec, Maya, and Aztec. Archaeologists have even discovered the ruins of sunken Olmec ball courts. Not much is known about the specific rules of the game. Mayan art depicts ball players wearing protective padding. And other art shows players wearing helmets and even leather belts. It is important to note that the game wasn't just for fun it had. A serious religious significance for those who played and watched. It is possible that some ball players were forced to participate. Against their will and that human sacrifice played a role in the game. According to Mayan mythology, ball games were symbolic of the cycle of life, death, and regeneration. What was Chichen Itza? Chichen Itza was an important pre-Columbian city built by the Maya and located in the eastern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula in modern-day Mexico. Chichen Itza is known for a large nine-level pyramid, which sits at the center of a main plaza. The pyramid is topped with a small, square temple accessible by four staircases. One on each side of the structure. The site also includes ball playing courts, palaces, and an astronomical observatory. The city flourished between 800 and 1200 CE, which places it mostly in the post-classic period of the Maya, the period just before European conquest of the area. The buildings are decorated with bright, colorful paintings and painted relief sculpture. Popular themes include animals such as jaguars, coyotes, eagles, serpents, and mythological figures. Also found at Chichen Itza are chikmuls. Altars in the shape of a reclining figure with hands resting at the sides. Chikmuls are common throughout Mesoamerica. What was Chichen Itza? Chichen Itza was an important pre-Columbian city built by the Maya and located in the eastern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula in modern-day Mexico. Chichen Itza is known for a large nine-level pyramid, which sits at the center of a main plaza. The pyramid is topped with a small, square temple accessible by four staircases. One on each side of the structure. The site also includes ball playing courts, palaces, and an astronomical observatory. The city flourished between 800 and 1200 CE, which places it mostly in the post-classic period of the Maya, the period just before European conquest of the area. 
the buildings are decorated with bright, colorful paintings and painted relief sculpture. Popular themes include animals such as jaguars, coyotes, eagles, serpents, and mythological figures. Also found at Chichen Itza are chikmuls. Altars in the shape of a reclining figure with hands resting at the sides. Chikmuls are common throughout Mesoamerica. What is the Mayan Codex style? Artists, held in high regard in Mayan society. Wrote hieroglyphs and made illustrations in ancient folded books called codices. There is a clear link between the style of the art produced in these codices and other types of art, such as painted ceramics. Mayan codex style art is filled with expressive characters and bold colors. These paintings, whether in a book or on a vessel, have text which helps to explain the meaning of the images. These hieroglyphic inscriptions sometimes represent images and are therefore pictographic, and sometimes represent sounds. A system of dots and bars was used to mark time. Scholars think it was common for the writing and the illustrations to have been completed by the same person, and refer to them as artist scribes. What is the Mayan Codex style? Artists, held in high regard in Mayan society. Wrote hieroglyphs and made illustrations in ancient folded books called codices. There is a clear link between the style of the art produced in these codices and other types of art, such as painted ceramics. Mayan codex style art is filled with expressive characters and bold colors. These paintings, whether in a book or on a vessel, have text which helps to explain the meaning of the images. These hieroglyphic inscriptions sometimes represent images and are therefore pictographic, and sometimes represent sounds. A system of dots and bars was used to mark time. Scholars think it was common for the writing and the illustrations to have been completed by the same person, and refer to them as artist scribes. What is a Byzantine icon? In Greek, the word icon means image and it is an important part of religious worship in the Orthodox Christian Church. An icon is a sacred representation of a holy person usually a saint, Christ, or the Virgin Mary. Byzantine icons were usually painted on wooden panels, but also included ivory, mosaics, textiles, and more. Icons held powerful religious significance some icons were even linked to miracles. Towards the end of the 6th century, a conservative group of iconoclasts, literally image smashers, worried that the icons themselves were being worshipped. 
and icons became targets for destruction during the iconoclastic controversy in the 8th century. Why is Borobudur considered one of the greatest Buddhist temples in the world? The mountain-like Borobudur is an enormous Buddhist temple built in the 9th century in Java, Indonesia, and not discovered by outsiders until the 19th century. Based on the stupa form, the temple is covered in ornate sculptures and staircases oriented to the points of the compass. The mountain form is no accident it is in fact a key element of the temple's complex symbolism. Did samurai culture influence Japanese art? As samurai culture grew stronger during the Kamakura period, 1185 to 1392, it did indeed have an influence on the arts, including sculpture and painting. One of the most powerful hand scroll paintings from the 13th century is Night Attack on the Sanjo Palace, which depicts swirling flames in deep orange hues as armored. Warriors on horseback attack one another in a battle between the Minamoto and Terra clans. The surprise attack was a significant historical event in Japan's military history. And though the hand scroll was painted nearly 100 years after the battle took place, it serves as a historical record of the period. What are major characteristics of Chinese painting from the Sui to the Yuan dynasties? The range of Chinese art covered in this chapter is immense. And while it is difficult to summarize such a varied history into one answer, there are indeed important attributes common to many examples of Chinese painting from this time period. Unlike medieval painters in Europe, Chinese painters did not paint on wood panels. Instead, they painted on silk or paper, usually with water-based inks and colorful pigments. The practice of painting was considered an intellectual exercise with close ties to Confucian and Buddhist philosophies. Early Chinese paintings often exhibit a balance of seemingly spontaneous movement with thoughtful calm. Artists favored landscapes and nature scenes, as well as realistic figurative paintings. What was the iconoclastic controversy? During the early history of the Christian Church, there was a debate about whether or not it was appropriate to make representational images in religious art. The term iconoclasm means image breaking and iconoclasts believed that representational imagery should be forbidden. At the heart of the debate was the relationship between a painted image and the figure being depicted. There was fear of idolatry and a fear that beauty could distract the viewer from the religious sanctity of the figure. It is possible the rise of Islam, and the iconoclastic views of that religion 
influenced the Byzantines during the iconoclastic controversy. What is Chan Buddhism? Chan Buddhism, known in Japan as Zen Buddhism, is a school of Mahayana Buddhism that developed in China in the 6th century and gained importance during the Song dynasties. Chan Buddhist philosophy emphasizes the direct experience of the individual and enlightenment through meditation. While some Chan Buddhists believe enlightenment through meditation takes a lifetime to achieve, others believe enlightenment can be achieved suddenly, in a flash of understanding. Chan Buddhism had a large impact on Chinese painting. The 13th century painter Liang Kai's simple, yet expressive, hanging scroll. Sixth Chan Patriarch Chopping Bamboo, depicts a crouching patriarch who suddenly achieves enlightenment after hearing the sound of his blade striking bamboo wood. What is the portrait of Lord Packle? Lord Packle was a powerful Mayan ruler from the ancient city of Palenque. In modern day Chiapas in Mexico, between 615 and 683 c. E. Lord Packle and his descendants commissioned a great deal of monumental art and architecture in this Mayan capital. At his death, Lord Packle was laid to rest in a sarcophagus. In his tomb archaeologists found a portrait of the ruler as a young man with a crown of jade and flowers. He is thought to be represented according to Mayan ideals of beauty, which emphasize a long, sloping face and skull, and full lips. Traces of red paint indicate that the piece used to be painted, as was most Mayan sculpture. What is the difference between a hand scroll, a hanging scroll, and an album leaf? A hand scroll is a roll of paper or silk that is unfurled to reveal text and painted images. Hand scrolls are kept rolled up when not being viewed. Cinematic in nature, the images are presented piece by piece. As the viewer works his or her way through the hand scroll, though usually around a foot long, hand scrolls can vary in length. Siagui's 13th century hand scroll titled Pure and Remote View of Streams and Mountains is nearly 30 feet long. Unlike a hand scroll, a hanging scroll can be seen all in one viewing and is displayed on a wall. Though not permanently. Even though hanging scrolls can be rather large. They were not intended for large public spaces, but for smaller, private viewings. An album is essentially a book of paintings, usually of similar subject matter. An individual painting is called a leaf. What is a pagoda?
derived from the Indian stupa. A pagoda is a tall tower notable for its repeated roof lines featuring upturned eaves. Pagodas are one of the most recognizable examples of East Asian architecture. Often found at the center of Buddhist temple complexes. Early pagodas were solid structures and therefore could not be entered. And were made of stone, brick, and wood. The Foguang Si Pagoda in Yingxian, China, built in 1056 and designed to house relics, is still the tallest wooden building in the world, at nine stories. What is the paradise of Amitabha painting? The paradise of Amitabha is an 8th century wall painting within the Dunhuang Caves. An important Buddhist site along the Silk Road in northwestern China. In the 9th century, the Tang Emperor Wuzong had ordered Buddhist temples and shrines to be destroyed. But Buddhist art in the Dunhuang Cave survived such a fate. In the painting, the large figure seated in the center is Amitabha on a raised platform. Lesser deities and bodhisattvas dance around Amitabha. In a lavish scene that evokes the splendor of paradise. What are Siyahi's six canons? Siyahi was a painter and scholar from the late 5th century. Who is known for establishing six laws or canons of painting. These six canons go a long way in explaining the underlying philosophy of Chinese painting. There is ongoing debate as to the exact translation of each of the canons. But according to James Cahill, author of The Six Laws and How to Read Them, they are as follows, engender a sense of movement through spirit consonants. Use the brush with the bone method. Responding to things, depict their forms. According to kind, describe appearances with color. Dividing and planning, positioning and arranging. Transmitting and conveying earlier models through copying and transcribing. See Kleiner 57. While difficult to understand, Siehe's principles of painting tell. Art historians a great deal about what was important to early Chinese painters. The first principle suggests a strong connection between art making and spirituality. The goal was to capture the spontaneity and intangible spirit quality of the subject being depicted. The latter principles are slightly more straightforward, and refer to technical skills. Yet he explains how to hold the paintbrush, encourages naturalism, and emphasizes skill development through copying and practice. What is Islamic art? This is particularly challenging question to answer. The religion of Islam began in the Middle East during the 7th century. And quickly spread east across Central Asia to parts of China and Southeast Asia. 
and west into large areas of North and Central Africa, and Europe. The term Islamic art does not necessarily indicate that the art is religious in subject matter, but refers to art produced by cultures that practice Islam. Islamic art is therefore incredibly diverse, and influenced by both religion and secular cultural values. Some of the most common types of Islamic art include carpets and tapestries. Calligraphy, book decoration, metalwork, and architecture. What kind of art was made in Ilifat? Alifa was the capital of the Yoruba people of Nigeria from the 13th to the 15th century. An era known as the pavement period due to the Yoruba practice of paving parts of the city with rectangular rows of stone and pottery fragments laid out in a herringbone pattern. Alifa was an important center for the arts, and the Yoruba established a long tradition of portraiture including works in stone, wood, and terracotta, as well as later works in bronze, brass, and other metal alloys made using the lost wax casting method. Portrait sculpture played an important role in ritualistic ancestor worship, and sculptures were often ornately decorated with veils, wigs, crowns, or neck rings, particularly during important ceremonies. What is the Ananda Temple? The Ananda Temple is the most famous and spiritually significant Buddhist shrine in Burma and was built in the early 12th century by the leader Kyanzita during the pagan period, which lasted from the 11th to 14th centuries. The temple is notable for its cruciform shape and tall central spire, which is 165 feet high. The temple is decorated with additional small spires, spikes and four large sculptures of the Buddha, each reaching a height of approximately 35 feet. The lavish ornamental architecture of the Ananda Temple reflects the flourishing of Buddhism in Burma at the time of its construction. What are the major periods of Mesoamerican art? Mesoamerican art, art of Mexico and Central America is divided into three main categories, the pre-classic period, c. 1200B.C.E.300 CE Classic Period, C300 to 950 Post Classic Period, C950, 1521 The Post Classic Period ended quite suddenly. When the major indigenous empires of the Americas fell to the Spanish conquistadores led by Hernan Cortes. Would they be strong enough to support such a heavy structure? In the year 550 AC, e there was an answer, the dome collapsed, not because of the windows, 
but due to weakness in the supporting pairs. A reconfigured dome was constructed in its place, steeper and therefore even higher than the original. This new dome, along with extra supports, has survived ever since. Nearly 1,000 years after its construction, the Hagia Sophia was converted to a mosque after the Ottomans took over Constantinople in 1453. Who is Amitabha Buddha? Amitabha Buddha was a mortal king who reached an enlightened state and became a Buddha. In the tradition of Pure Land Buddhism, the most popular form of Buddhism in China. Known as the Buddha of Infinite Life and Infinite Light as well as Buddha of the West. Amitabha Buddha promises rebirth in Paradise, or Western Pure Land, for those with faith. What is the significance of ball playing in Mesoamerica? Ball games were popular throughout Mesoamerica. An art depicting ball games exists in many Mesoamerican cultures including the Olmec, Maya, and Aztec. Archaeologists have even discovered the ruins of sunken Olmec ball courts. Not much is known about the specific rules of the game. Mayan art depicts ball players wearing protective padding. And other art shows players wearing helmets and even leather belts. It is important to note that the game wasn't just for fun it had. A serious religious significance for those who played and watched. It is possible that some ball players were forced to participate against their will and that human sacrifice played a role in the game. According to Mayan mythology, ball games were symbolic of the cycle of life, death, and regeneration. What are the rock churches of Lalabella? Lalabella was a medieval city in Ethiopia ruled by the Zagwa dynasty, which held power from 1137 until the end of the 13th century. The city was also an important Christian center and a popular pilgrimage route. And church building projects were possibly conceived of as the construction of a new Jerusalem in the Ethiopian mountains. At the behest of King Lalabella, Ethiopian Christians carved 11 churches out of red, volcanic rock. Some of which are freestanding, while others are semi-detached and carved into rock walls. The churches are tall, narrow, and rectangular with a combination of arabesque and cruciform windows. These unique structures have been declared a UNESCO World Heritage. Site and remain an important site for Ethiopian Christians. What is pre Columbian art? Pre Columbian art is a broad term given to the art of Mesoamerica which includes Mexico and Central America, and South America before the arrival of Christopher Columbus. 
in 1492. It includes the art of large cultures such as the Maya, Aztecs, and Inca. What do the Yoruba consider beautiful? To make a beautiful work of art in the Yoruba tradition is a complex task. With many aesthetic requirements and a long tradition of art criticism. The Yoruba are known for their multifaceted approach to beauty. In which morality of the artist affects the aesthetic value of the work they create. They value both the inner and exterior concept of self. And at the core of this value is the idea of Iwaleva, which means, character is beauty or, nature is beauty. The work of art itself, for example a figurative sculpture, must also possess specific qualities. Including the following, balance between realism and abstraction, for example, a sculpture should not be too real nor too abstract, clearly defined linear forms smooth, delicate surfaces, and slightly rounded features pleasing. Proportion and dignified symmetry youthful liveliness balanced with calm maturity an example of the Yoruba. Aesthetic can be seen in a 13-inch copper sculpture from the 13th to 14th centuries. This sculpture depicts a stoic, seated male figure, and though it is now damaged. The figure's forearms are missing and there is some damage in the legs, the work displays skillful naturalism. Individualized detail, smooth features, and appropriate size and proportion. It is possible that the seated figure was ritualistically adorned with the clothes and Ornaments of a Yoruba leader and is associated with Yoruba themes of honor and respect. Yoruba society remains one of the largest in Africa, with a population of about 35 million in Nigeria alone. As well as other African countries, the Caribbean, and the United States. The Yoruba aesthetic continues to be an important element in Yoruba art production and function, to this day. What happened to the colossal Buddha at Bamiyan? While the colossal Buddha at Bamiyan once rose nearly 200 feet in a specially carved niche, in the side of a mountain in the Hindu Kush region of Afghanistan, it, along with another massive, though slightly smaller, sculpture, were destroyed by the Taliban in 2001. Originally constructed between the 2nd and 5th centuries, the style of the monumental work was influenced by the many cultures of the region including China and India, and was once brightly painted with layers of paint and lime plaster, which resulted in a semi-transparent look influenced by the Gupta style. The colossal Buddha was not the only Buddhist sculpture destroyed by the Taliban. Almost all Buddhist art in the nearby region was targeted, a controversial example of iconoclastic action. Who was Emperor Justinian? Emperor Justinian was one of the most powerful and important rulers of the 
early Byzantine Empire and was responsible for large-scale building projects. Centered in the city of Constantinople, and in Byzantine territories in Italy. The Church of San Vital in Ravenna, on the eastern coast of Italy. Contains large mosaics dedicated to Justinian. Completed around 547 CE and placed in a central location in the church. Emperor Justinian and his attendants is one of the most impressive Byzantine mosaic from the period. And features realistically modeled figures composed against. A golden background and framed within an abstract, geometric pattern of glass tile. The haloed figure of Justinian is in the center, flanked by his ecclesiastical personnel on his left. And both civil and military personnel on his right. The soldiers are grouped behind a large shield decorated with the Greek letters XP. Representing Christ. The church officials on his right hold a jeweled cross and a gospel book. Wearing long purple robes that indicate his power, and visually align him with images of Christ. Justinian wears ornate crown jewels and carries a vessel containing bread for the mass held in the church. Against the glittering gold background. It is as if the emperor and his attendants hover in a detached, spiritual realm. Emperor Justinian is clearly in charge of this far-flung Byzantine outpost. Even if he never actually visited Ravenna during his lifetime. What is a centrally planned church? A centrally planned church is a church with the altar at the center. And was often used for baptisteries or tombs. The Church of Santa Costanza is an example of a centrally planned church. Featuring a central altar surrounded by an ambulatory. The ambulatory is made up of paired Corinthian columns. The Church of Santa Costanza was originally covered in elaborate mosaics and marble. What is a Thanka? The Thanka is a painted banner, and an important form of Tibetan art. Thankas often depict important people such as spiritual and political leaders in a way similar to Byzantine icons. Which suggests that those individuals depicted in Thankas have reached a semi-divine status. The Thanka of Green Terra is nearly two feet long and depicts the protective Tibetan deity, Green Terra. Who personifies transcendent wisdom and is often thought of as the universal mother figure to Buddhas. Made with ink and color on canvas, this 13th century Thanka shows the deity surrounded by architectural forms and 17 species of the Bodhi tree. This particular Thanka is part of the Indian and Southeast Asian Art Collection at the Cleveland Art Museum. What is the significance of the recumbent Buddha? The Buddha is occasionally depicted reclining on his side with an arm tucked under his ear. 
while the other arm stretches the length of his body. This body positions indicates the Parinirvana, or death of the Buddha. In the Southeast Asian tradition, also popular in China and Japan. In Sri Lanka, a 46-foot-long sculpture of the recumbent Buddha was carved from a single massive rock at a temple site known as Galvihara. Made sometime between the 11th and 12th centuries, this monumental representation of the Buddha's Parinirvana shows the holy man surrounded by a smaller scale mourner, likely his cousin, Ananda. A small pillow, carved from stone, supports the Buddha's head, his face is round. And his thin robes appear to cling to his body in the traditional iconographic manner. What is Great Zimbabwe? Great Zimbabwe was an important capital city of the Bantu-speaking Shona people between the 12th and 15th centuries, reaching its peak between 1250 and 1450 with an estimated population of approximately 15,000 people and control over a large territory covering an area of nearly 2,000 acres, the ruined city of Great Zimbabwe is principally comprised of three structures, the hill complex, the valley ruins, and the great enclosure, which are surrounded by a large protective wall, nearly 30 feet tall. The great enclosure, which dates from the mid-14th to 15th century, was made with a special pattern of dry stone blocks, a technique still used by contemporary builders, and is the largest stone structure in sub-Saharan Africa. Many sculpture and pottery fragments have been found at the Great Zimbabwe site. Indicating a rich art culture. A popular material for sculpture was soapstone, and many examples of soapstone bird carvings have been discovered. Though the exact significance of these sculptures is still unknown. <laughs>